All is quiet on the Western Front. The Vancouver Canucks, at the time of recording this audio, have not made themselves a trade, but they have made a few extra roster moves. In addition to this, we do have some updates that do involve trades that may or may not happen over the next few hours. We'll see. But for now, let's talk about the Canucks' latest updates. We'll go over the rumors. We'll go over everything. And I will say, for anybody who has had the Vancouver Canucks Twitter page on their notifications... Yeah, this isn't really, like, the best thing to go out there and do. These notifications are not good for my health. Do not tweet unless it's a trade. But the Vancouver Canucks have announced today that defenseman Guillaume Brisebois has been activated from the IR and assigned to the Abbotsford Canucks. Hey, I don't think y'all remember this, but Guillaume Brisebois was actually on the main team this entire time. He was just injured. So, the fact is, he'll be okay to play, he's activated, and he's going to be playing with the AHL club for a little bit. Good to see him back. Breezebois has been a part of this organization for a long freaking time, so just seeing his track record bring itself back up in the way that it has, that's a nice sign to see. We also had ourselves news that Vasily Podkolzin has been sent down to Abbotsford too. This is not related to Dakota Joshua returning to the lineup from his injury, though. So, two pieces of news. We've got Guillaume Brisebois and Pod Colson both getting sent down to Abbotsford. Rick Dollywell would later clarify on Twitter that the Pod Colson getting sent down thing, it's not related to Phil Kessel. There hasn't been a signing on Kessel as of right now, but we'll see whether or not that actually gets done in the upcoming days here. With this in mind, though, let's go out there and talk a little bit more about Pod Colson. Rutherford tells me, Patrick Johnston, that the Pod Colson move is simply paperwork, i.e. related to setting Abbotsford's Calder Cup roster on Friday. The team was really happy with his first two games back in the NHL, so he probably will get called up once again. Now, I'm not smart enough to understand what exactly is going on with the AHL's Calder Cup playoff roster, but I'd have to assume that... There have to be a certain amount of guys on the team by the time the trade deadline hits in order for them to actually be a part of the Calder Cup playoffs. And so with this in mind, if you take this at 100% face value, oh, Jim Rutherford is putting Pud Colson down in the AHL because they want him to play in the Abbey playoffs, it means that Pud Colson is probably not going to get traded. If he is in their plans to participate in the AHL's postseason run, then having him there is better than having him not there, so they'd probably want to keep him around, who really knows? I mean, maybe Patrick Alvin goes completely against this tomorrow or later today and trades Pod Coles in any way, but for now, the apparent idea floating around is that Pods is going to stick around. He'll play in the AHL playoffs, and the playoffs, of course, is the playoffs, so that's beyond the trade deadline period. Now, let's go out there and read some of the rumors, extra thoughts in regards to the Canucks and the Jake Gensel conversation. This is what Elliot Friedman said earlier this morning. I'm under the impression that Vancouver doesn't feel like they can win the Gensel trade race. People are waiting to see how Carolina feels and if the Hurricanes want to make a push themselves. So is there some sort of a tentativeness for Vancouver? Are they not feeling all too secure in this race? Well... It's not for a lack of effort, though, as we had ourselves this tweet going out there from Josh Yohe talking about how multiple teams are indeed in on Jake Gensel, but I've been told by numerous sources that Vancouver is very aggressively trying to make a deal happen. And of course, Josh Yohe does his own reporting for Pittsburgh Hockey Now, I'm pretty sure, and he does a lot of stuff with this environment. So if there's anybody that's going to be connected to the Pittsburgh scene, knowing what's going on, knowing who's talking to what teams and whatever, it's probably Yohei. And according to sources, Vancouver is very aggressively trying to make it happen, despite the fact that maybe they don't feel like they can win, according to Friedman. Who really knows, though? You don't put an effort into these things with the expectation that you're going to lose, so obviously the Vancouver Canucks are going to keep on trying to go with this. But when it comes to whatever trade price might be there, we had ourselves an article published earlier today on the Canucks website, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, the Canucks Insider article from earlier today. And this quote, which may have been an old quote, who really knows? It's a quote nonetheless, though, from Jim Rutherford. We already paid a sizable price to bring Elias Lindholm in. 
and that's what we'll be juggling this week. As to, do you go real hard again and target one of the big names, or do you go with somebody that's had some success in the league and is maybe not quite having the same success at this point, where the price may be a little bit lower? So, even as far back as whenever this quote was made, whenever the article that was posted today was written, we have ourselves some, let's just say hesitation from the Vancouver Canucks, debating as to whether or not they go fully all-in on another asset. Now, this, of course, could be applied to the Jake Gensel talks because, hey, we already paid a whole bunch of prospects, multiple picks, and Kuzmenko to get Lindholm. What do we need to do to get another guy? Do we even want to go out there and trade for another guy after trading away this sizable price for Lindy? It's going to be interesting to see where the Canucks go with this over the next few hours, but Rutherford also said we're talking about players all the time. All the time. We've talked about every situation. I'm confident in that. The preparation here is already done, and that's why we're confident. With one phone call to Patrick and then to me, a decision can be made in five minutes. And if we're not quite sure of it, we go to the analytics. And I like this reply here from, oh boy, Ruppet Mangles? I'm apologizing for that. I butchered that. So much more assured than in the Benning years. These guys have it covered. And I have to agree there. This Vancouver Canucks management is making us all feel so confident in what they would want to do. And there's no sort of, let's just say, fear like we had with the Benning era, where we were kind of scared whenever the Canucks would make a trade. We'd be like, okay, what did they give up? Oh, no. Like, there was a dread that was over looming over the entire fan base with the Benning era. But either way, this is another update in regards to the Penguins and the Gensel talks. This was published by Nick Horvat, who does stuff for the hockey writers, I'm pretty sure. He went out there and said, it sounds like the Vancouver Canucks are Jake Gensel's preferred destination. Hey, Nick, is there any chance that he gets traded today? There is definitely a chance. So, with the Vancouver Canucks reportedly aggressively going after Jake Gensel, and with Gensel himself reportedly wanting to come here, this makes things very, very interesting because we know that Kyle Dubas is the GM of Pittsburgh, right? And one of the things that made Kyle Dubas super well-loved as a player's GM in Toronto was that he would always do right by the players. If the player wasn't getting an opportunity in Toronto, then he would trade that player somewhere like San Jose, where they could go out there and actually play. Barabanov comes to mind right away. If Kyle Dubas had a player who wanted to go to a specific team, he would do anything to get that trade done. So, if Jake Gensel really does want to go to Vancouver, he's the preferred player for them and they're the preferred destination for him, if that's the case, then it makes a lot of sense for Kyle Dubas to maybe want to ease up on those negotiations. Maybe the Canucks could get Gensel for some sort of a discount, because if he really wants to come here, then there's no leverage to the other teams, right? Or, I mean, let's say the Carolina Hurricanes make a push, and they really put themselves in there, they give up a lot of stuff, they are giving Kyle Dubas more of what he wants than Vancouver would. Maybe Dubas then goes against the player and says, okay, screw that. Gensel, we're trading you to Carolina. We're getting all this stuff from them, not from Vancouver here. In regards to what a Canucks trade could look like, though, Cam Robinson says if Vancouver can get Gensel without including Lekaramaki or Villander, it will be a huge win. But that means that Niels Hoglander surely has to be involved. That will hurt, but when the window is open, you've got to risk it to get the biscuit. And to be honest, I don't like the sound of that at all. I want to keep Hoglander, but of course, Gensel is very good. I mean, Hoglander is good too, but Gensel's probably a tad better. So if you make a trade like this, I can understand it. It's just, oh, the preferred scenario would be to have both of them on the team, right? Hoglander and Gensel, two guys to play with Elias Pettersson or with Besser and Miller or whatever. Ay ay ay! it's going to be crazy, man, talking about this Gensel conversation. But either way, with all this in mind, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Firstly, about the Vancouver Canucks sending down Guillaume Brisebois and Vasily Podkolzin, as well as all the updates that we are getting in regards to the Canucks and Jake Gensel. They want him. Who knows if they're going to get him? They're aggressively trying to make this happen. The Canucks apparently are Gensel's preferred trade destination. And what do you think the price is to get that done? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed this. And bye.